This is Boxes and Briefs, a podcast with real-life business stories. But we will be asking the hard questions and challenging traditions. So broaden your thinking with fresh perspectives and solve problems for business success. All right, welcome to another episode of Boxes and Briefs. My name is Lisa Garrett. And I'm Tori. And today we have with us Debbie. Debbie, welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Debbie Gregory. I'm the director and founder of Positive Direction, a leadership consultant and a qualified coach. So I've got about, I suppose, why am I here? I've got 25 years operational HR leadership, I suppose globally, with a wide diverse range of industries. So that goes from retail, finance, not-for-profit, tech and health. What we specialize in in positive direction is leadership development. Uh So building teams and performance, challenge and change. And I'm also a qualified career development coach. So there's Sorry, creative what coach? Career development coach. Career development. And you've got a bit of everything. What's the accent though? The accent, yeah. I apologise for the accent. No, yeah. don't apologise. Love an accent. We love an accent. Manchester. 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 I love an English accent. Like, yeah. I'm just I've been here 18 years and it's not gone. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, well, what is your why? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Big question. I suppose my biggest why is I want to add value every day. My goal is to help people and business to be the best that they can be. So mm. either that's developing programs or it's one-on-one coaching. I suppose for positive direction, everything we do is with a holistic, fully human point of view. So what that actually means is it's from three areas. First and foremost, mm. it's for you. So increasing that self-awareness because who yeah. you are is how you lead. Yeah. Secondly, it's actually oh, what can hold you apply. On, hold on, I like that. Who you are is how you lead. Yeah. I was thinking, like, it's, it's giving me therapy vibes. But that's yeah. probably... <laughs> we can lay on the wow. couch and yeah. do this if you want. Like, oh, my God, oh my God this is deep. That's good. I love it. Sorry, that was number one. What was number two? <laughs> so number two is how can you apply it at home? Because you've all been on... Lots of people have been on lots of training. Yeah. And they go, oh, that's really interesting. And yeah. then they get back to work and it's business as usual. Yeah. So the reason to really make it stick is to take any of the essence, what we do at Positive Direction, and go, actually, what can I do at home? Because it then becomes part of your identity. Yeah. So the third thing then yes. is how can you apply it at work right so that's ultimately what mm. we want to do to add value and make that a right. sustainable change so you work on the home stuff first and like you as a person and then the it's work integrated it's integrated right the way through mm. so everything that we do there'll be aspects you know people know up front this is what we're looking at all three angles yeah. And it actually, we're working on a workshop yesterday with a group of execs, and one of them said, I've never actually worked through a program before to have the multiple hats on. And they said, it's amazed how many of these mm-hmm. models, mindsets, yeah. and theories I can actually take home and use with the kids yeah. and the husband. Because <laughs> if you learn in isolation, then maybe it'll happen in isolation. Yep. But if you're learning through all the different areas, it should affect everything. Yep. That's the theory. I love that. It seems to work. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. So today we're talking about better leaders yeah um this month's topic of leadership and i want to know what's what's the worst case scenario well i like to say i haven't had the worst case scenario <laughs> so let me just give you a little bit of context so when i'm working with new count um, clients mm. one of the first things i do is i'll arrange and we'll do a focus group so the theory of that or the method of that is go in to fully understand from a right wide range of people in the industry actually or in their business what's really going on so what's the status quo so we can identify what are the capability needs going forward to get to the desired future leadership now as i say, the caveat is i haven't had anyone with all of these but if we're looking at yeah. worst case scenario mm. and some of these is i suppose is it's the environment that the leaders create so if people are treating their people as a resource so having more of i suppose an environment of um focus on pure performance mm-hmm. or lack of clarity or even one of command and control what you tend to find is it creates a lot of um i suppose confusion overwhelm and fear and they're your worst case scenarios mm. people need to feel safe when yeah. they come into workplace so they can bring the whole selves yes. so that's the most important thing and the leaders are the ones that set that up if you've got someone that can actually really take those risks 
then they're going to actually be able to, it's not that like you can squeeze more work out of them, but they actually enjoy what they're doing. They're yeah. going to come up with the new ideas. Yeah. They're going to feel comfortable. They do put in the extra effort, don't they? Yeah. 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 It doesn't always have to mean more hours. It actually no. just means they feel safer to do that. Yeah. They'll yeah. come up and share the even silly ideas without that fear yeah. of repercussion. Yeah, about treating people like people, you know, yeah. like in rather than resources like what you yeah. said and it's it's not rocket science but yeah. unfortunately it doesn't always happen and what happens when that is i suppose the bit of a knock-on effect if you've got worst case scenario environment your people are going to leave well yeah. actually there's a little bit of a side effect on that if you've got worst case environment you're actually going to have people that are anxious and underperforming and their stay, which could be worse for a business. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. Because they're frightened of doing anything. So you're actually just, I suppose, it's filling a seat. And yep. that's not the individuals. They're just, I suppose, backed into a corner that way because yep. the environment they're in. Or they'll leave, which is obviously costly to an organisation. Yeah. yeah. And then the byproduct of that is you've actually then got somebody that is got more eroded confidence so they could either i suppose eroded confidence or lack of experience of good leadership so if they move somewhere else they could replicate that leadership yeah which because that's the only thing they've al- already experienced mm, yeah or they're going to move to a different place more risk adverse and a lesser version of themselves so that's yeah. what i think is worst case scenario there's no, actually good, no good outcome no. i was going to say yeah it sounds like it would lead to a lack in confidence to the employee and then maybe they don't have the confidence to actually go out and get another job hence why they stay yeah and there's pockets where i suppose on -on one-on-one coaching and from a career perspective i've worked with people like that yeah so to say i've i've given you the whole worst case scenario but the snippets that i worked for haven't experienced the full shebang yet yeah in one place (laughs) thankfully (laughs) but you know it's out there well Mm. when you said before about um getting a focus group together is that like the initial stage of, of trying to figure out if you're a good leader is what other people say about you? That would tend to be, if it's one-on-one, that would tend to be a 360-degree feedback. Right. So that's a formal mechanism where, you know, it's it's a development mechanism. I will say that up front. It should never be a remedial mechanism. Okay. So that is a, actually this person wants to, to develop and grow. Mm-hmm. So, hey, I want feedback. So they will rate themselves and they right. will nominate a range of people to do um, ratings that's and feedback That's got to be a scary process. It is really brave yeah. and it can be quite confronting for some people because yeah. it shines the mirror up on some things that they maybe already knew and hoped people didn't spot or yeah. things that are their blind spots. But that's if okay. he, that's what I said, it has to be a mutual agreement if you're doing something like that where yeah. people want to and are prepared for it. And that's where the one-on-one coaching, you have to have a yeah. safe space and that's, then yeah. plans of action to move forward. Yeah, I was going to say that's a green flag for a leader even making that decision, Yeah, you know. Yeah, there was a very cool quote I read this morning. It said, um, what's the bravest thing you've ever said? And the answer was, help. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like if you're in a leadership position and you don't know if you're doing good or not. Yeah, definitely. And you don't, they don't, people don't ask. Yeah, it's got to be a scary step though to open yourself up that much because it's not all going to be good, yeah. <laughs> like you're saying. It won't no, all nobody's be there, perfect. it's not all going to be good either. But, you know, the, it's amazing when you do ask for help. Yeah. You know, people will actually give you so much more than you ever realise. You yeah. don't have to do anything on your own. Yeah, yeah. people want to help. Yeah. yeah. The more you hide it, the harder it, and the bigger yeah. this thing gets in the background. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay, well, what's your common sense tip around better leaders? Well, it's a good lead on from where we've said it actually is always start with yourself. Self, self, self yeah. is probably the best thing. It goes back to that who you are is how you lead. Mm. If something's gone wrong or you've got a clash or you're not getting the results or whatever it is, my biggest recommendation, recommendation is to stop and say, what could I have done better or yeah. differently? Kind of the stones at glass houses, right? Well, yeah, because, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll we'll point the finger at everybody else but sometimes it might just be something that unconsciously or inadvertently we've we've overlooked it's not Mm -hmm. that we do something catastrophe for long but we do something wrong but we're quick to blame or jump to Mm. assumptions or whatever so you know if we could actually just take that bit of a a pause and go hi you know what was happening then why do we think that was happening and what could i do differently even just to stop and have that conversation with yourself will make a massive difference. Yeah. Yeah. There was an article that I read a long time ago that actually was with Harvard Business Review, and mm-hmm. it's always stuck with me. 
they actually said if you have a personality clash with someone the best thing to do is to get closer to them rather than avoid them Mm -hmm. or ignore them yeah get closer to them and be really really curious because it's often that the clash is obviously because it's something that you don't understand so it's an opportunity to learn it's a point of view thing isn't it once you understand their point of view you're more understanding and empathetic or the other thing is It actually is, the clash could be you're seeing something in the other person that actually is within you. So again, that curiosity to stop and go, hang on, why is this pushing my buttons? Is my recommendation (laughs) to be like the common sense, but we don't do it. We're we're quick to get to results instead of, you know, I suppose, measure twice, cut once and go, actually, let's go to the root cause here so that we can overcome that ongoing. Boxes and Briefs is proudly brought to you by Gilligan Shepherd the problem solvers in business. All right, Debbie, so tell me, what trends in better leadership do you have an opinion on? Ooh, lots of things I think are potentially quite strong and coming in the future. So I suppose four key ones that I suppose resonate and I identify and see a lot of. So no surprising, there's an upward trend in technology and artificial artificial intelligence. Let me get that out there. So the more things are going to be simplified and streamlined. That doesn't necessarily mean, and I hear a lot of people going, that means that people are not needed. That's actually not the case. We've had technology coming in for decades. Yes, we have. And more yep. jobs, different jobs are yeah. there. So it shouldn't be something to be scared of. Yep. It's something to be embraced. That's probably one of the trends that I, yeah. I, I would say. Yeah. The other one is we're more geographically and globally connected than ever before. I mean, we've had the whole work from home, work from anywhere. We've got access to so much information. It is ridiculous. It's actually overwhelming. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it is overwhelming. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. So we actually need to make sure that we're, as, as leaders, are more connected with our people and Mm -hmm. we're thinking outside the box of how we do that so it's not the regular oh we just do a meeting in this way it's actually how can we do it and it might be the little and often as opposed to the one hour yeah uh, traditional so it's just thinking it that way Mm. i think i would appreciate it more (laughs) little and often so we've got that much on our plate so so yeah that's probably one of the other ones the other one is we've got a more diverse workspace or workflow or work Force, let's uh-huh. get the right word. Yes, the workforce. <laughs> yeah, about, yeah. yeah. Work spe- we have got diverse workspaces though. Yeah. Diverse work for- workforce than I had before. We've yes. actually got five generations working in one industry at any one times at the minute. So we've actually gone from what they call the silent generation. So yes. this is the older generation, the ones that have possibly gone through the walls. Yes. And they're more on that command and control. Just tell me what I need to do. Yep. I'll get on with it. You know, a little bit more, I suppose, subservient towards Yeah, less it. fluff, just sort of, yeah. yeah get Quite to the point. focused. Factory, Factory and industry yeah. do the work. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right the way through to the generation sites. So whereas what's more important to those is are we having purpose covered yes. an opportunity for the growth in my career uh, am i working for an organization that is you know globally conscious or yeah. you know environmentally mm. conscious essentially so we went from work hard play hard to work life balance yeah yeah uh, and actually you know i want more and expect more from my work is yeah. actually yeah. What, what there is, yes. which has an impact, I suppose, from a leadership perspective, mm-hmm. yeah. because the younger generation expect more. People say younger generations are, um, I suppose, expect that they know it all, but that's not it. They actually have strong opinions, and they've got, because they've got all the access, yes. actually, some of them are really, you know, a lot of them are really good opinions. Yeah. They just rightfully want more. Maybe this older generations, we should have done that. I think it's that whole, like, freedom of speech thing mm-hmm. that's come out too. Like, oh, everybody has the right to, you know, have their say, like, all the protesting about that kind of stuff. And, of course, the young people now, like, my generation just think, yeah, like, I do sort of <laughs> yeah. deserve yeah. this or I have the right to do that and ask for this. And yeah. Well, we say Becoming we should look after human. ourselves, you know, yeah. I suppose if you just from a, a, a human perspective, that we should have that self-efficacy and yeah. we're our number one advocate. Well, yeah. that should go for work as well, yeah. not yeah. just at home. Yep. You know, respectfully, yes. but absolutely it should do. Yeah, that's what we're encouraging <laughs> yeah. people. Then you discourage them at work. It just... Yes. doesn't make sense yeah. true so the fourth trend that are obviously which I suppose is lent on from what we've said is you know 
people are actually choosing organisations and want to work for organisations and leaders that are more sustainable and socially respons- socially responsible. Oh, yes. So, you know, actually people care what footprint is being left behind. Yep. So that's probably pretty key from that perspective. Yeah. So I suppose if then you go, well, from what does that mean from a leadership perspective? To me, it's that we need leaders that are more human than ever. Yes. So hence, yeah. it's not that yeah. technology and things are replacing. We actually yeah. really need that emotional connection. Do you think that takes away sort of the CV aspect from leaders? I don't know how to word it, but like, are we looking towards more, like you said, they need to be more human than ever? So does that take away cr- the need for credentials to a, an extent? Or like, does it make them less important? No, I think we always need some good question. I think we always need with everybody some level of, obviously, a level of capability and skills. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that is a constantly evolving. Yeah. So the skills that we've needed, let's face, you know, overused topic, but hey, we all had the pandemic over the last four years. Yeah. The skills that we needed pre that are, are different than what, well, during that were different than what we had pre and than what we have now. So skills are really important, but we actually need people that are leaders that are more self-aware. I suppose the first yep. thing yeah. I say is more self-aware and more willing to and proactive to grow and learn you know yeah. what are the trends out there you know what are some of the um, i suppose industries that you can learn from you know what do you need to know to be the best version of you for yeah. your people i suppose yeah. is one th- skill that they need to do yeah the other skill that i think they need is um to be able to connect people to purpose Yes. So we have visions, values, missions, all these things. And it they're all really, be, yeah, there's not has always, to be connection. people don't always see, they don't always join the dots. Yeah. And great leaders join the dots because yep. people want to add value. So if you help them see where they're making that change and value, yeah. that is part of that being yeah. really human. Yeah. Uh, the other one is obviously taking care of your team, completely opposite to the worst case scenarios, create a psychologically safe environment yeah. for your yeah. people. Yeah. make sure that they can yeah. bring the whole selves the, mm. the more that we become um, aware of what we're involved in we take more responsibility for so complete shift but when you think about the me too movement it wasn't just the women that were the victims it was also those who allowed it to happen right mm. so once you've been in a situation like that you want to come back with well I don't want to be responsible for being responsible <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah so I'm going to pick a better workplace so that I'm not involved in that disrespect of the planet or people or anything else like that. So it's kind of, it's a trigger. Yeah. And it's working in reverse that you're looking for better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. definitely. Yeah. Well, leaders need to set their people up for success and make sure they're not in an environment where they feel that, you know, either them or their colleagues mm-hmm. are actually put in distress or in situations that you know that they don't want to be on or shouldn't be in yeah. yep. they also need to remove barriers for people so yeah they know the self you know the credibility they've got the capability yeah they connect to the purpose but they remove barriers so they make sure and barriers could be anything from resources to time to helping yeah. people network yeah. you know that is part of a role of a really good leader yeah you know as well as you know making sure people are clear on who what when why how how, how and when yes we think we do that really well yeah. but not often you know so if we're really clear on that again yeah. that's helping that human approach you yes. set people up for success and i suppose in the final thing that is leaders need to i suppose stick to the vision but be flexible so we need to have a plan our leaders need to have a plan but actually keep an eye on the data the trends the analysis yeah. and most importantly the feedback from their people so that you can change and flex yeah, yeah. it's definitely becoming more and more about uh back and forth communication than it is now about just top down yeah 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 okay well on that then what are the signs of a bad leader a bad leader a bad leader a bad leader oh okay well yeah what's a toxic leader look a like? toxic <laughs> leader oh Ooh. well do you know a colleague once said to me and it's always stuck so I, I've, I've always thought of it is a bad leader is someone that snuffs others candle out to make their shine brighter oh, true yeah Yep. That so right. some of the traits or toxic traits that you can get from that is 
underdeveloped emotional intelligence um, they're a lone wolf they don't listen they have all the answers or perceive they've got all the answers so they do everything in isolation ego led is probably one of the hardest things that you have lack of vulnerability yeah they, i'm they, hearing narcissists <laughs> 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 yeah. i'm hearing you don't want to work there <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. i mean somebody who's got ego they're not even going to want to do one of those 360 reviews no. they're going to think they're the shit. Well, they're the ones where <laughs> yeah. you see the big um, disparity between what they rate and what others rate. And yeah. then they still tend to go, oh, yeah, but that's that person and there's a reason for it. They make and up then excuses. Hence yeah. why, again, go back to they have to want to and be willing to. You yeah. can't, a bit of that, you can take a horse to water, water yeah. but you can't make it drink. All right. So, so. say we've got somebody in middle management mm -hmm. and they're looking to take another step up. Yeah. What are the signs that you would decide okay that's not the track for them because they're showing certain red flags so okay i mean obviously if we identify some of those traits that we've just talked about that yeah. you know fixed yeah. mindset no curiosity all that sort of stuff but i actually i suppose if they want to move forward yeah then i firmly believe everyone has got the opportunity to develop like we don't know what we don't know so so long as they are given the feedback safely Mm -hmm. and they take it on board and they want to change and there's a clear plan of support to help them yeah you know the support for the change so it's like you've got to have a skill and a will yes so oh, I like that. That. skill and a will mm. huh. yeah. and, and and they've got to then actually i think it's more a case of you know you shouldn't be promoting this person yet yet yeah yeah so mm. you've got an opportunity yeah anyone yeah, yeah. can do it even if you spot these but a lot of people shy away from giving the feedback yeah. Okay. So what's the difference between a manager and a leader? So a manager and a leader, in my mind, I suppose managers, as I said, they manage the process. Mm -hmm. So they make sure it's more tactical, it's operational. They say who, what, when, why. There's the process, the guidelines, the measures. You know, they, they sort all that stuff to make stuff happen. Yeah. Um, a leader, as it said, a leader actually leads. They'll paint the vision for someone. They'll connect those dots that we talked yeah. about. They yeah. encourage, they stretch, they challenge, they care for yeah. their people. I mean, genuinely care for the people, not because it's a job. Yep. It's actually their care um, to, for, for what they do. And they look after their people's well-being. So people actually want to follow them. Sounds cliche. I, yeah, it true. always sounds cliche, but it's so true. You're yeah, right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've seen different memes of, you know, a leader is not one who's out front leading. They're actually in amongst it, helping with the grind. And then you'll get another one that will give you the complete opposite message. So I guess there has to be a little bit of both. A leader is the person who is showing the way. But then if there's any help required they will jump into the factory floor and help out absolutely and they're there yeah. it's not to be all fluffy yeah. you know a really great leader you know stretches and challenges they'll keep raising the bar but they'll do it safely yeah. you know they won't just be hey you've done 10 percent, now do 50 but go off and saw it on your own yeah it's actually how can you do it? what do you need from me yeah. but they will keep you know they'll, they'll work shoulder to shoulder but they'll yeah. keep their eye and help everyone else see how they can get their own way towards the goal yeah yeah do you think that means sort of taking away the hierarchy as well like between the leader and the team do you think a great leader would sort of sort of not yeah but more i don't know how to more flat um of instead of the triangle hierarchy. yeah instead of mm. i don't know do you know what i mean <laughs> no, no no look so a lot of organizations there's a lot of changed where they're going more on these agile and adaptive approaches which are a lot of i suppose flatter um organization structures yeah so they're working i suppose in tribes or squads so you've got people yep. with um, the same or, uh, expertise or working on one project now this is where leadership all the things i'm talking about is actually for leader that's got a direct report or leader and influencer you've got to have the same skill you still take care and you work on yeah so i suppose yes organizations are going flatter however i do believe you know some there still has to be a place for a leader leader yes. there just doesn't need to be millions of them yeah because no, that that's confusing. the whole well, the, but the great leader won't sort of act like they're above their team is kind of what i'm trying to say yeah. oh, they right. won't get in yeah. the way yeah they won't yeah. get in the way and they are very connected i suppose yeah. is the word they're very connected to the team yeah but you don't want to get to the situation which also can cause trouble where you know you're too chummy because that's where 
you know, leaders really struggle and have yeah. conversations with people that can't have the conversations that matter because they're it's too chummy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So again, clear, kind and fair repeated words that I use that's what you need to do for your lead you're not being fair on your your team members if you are not giving them the support because you feel bad about it because you're friends why do some people say no to leadership positions I think some people say no because of the previous experience of poor leaders some of the stuff that we've already talked about I think they've seen what it shouldn't be and yeah. they've seen what not to do. Yeah. So they've seen people working long hours, working really hard, that command and control, you know, that assumption that you have to be the one that speaks first and has all the answers and then there's the... Yeah, the pressure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. And then there's that <laughs> perceived office politics and numerous desa- de- demands. So I think that's some of the things that people tend to step away from. But yeah. I don't see that it really has to be that way. And you know, if someone's really, really good, you know, I know some amazing leaders that, you know, that don't fall into that traditional mould. You yeah. know, they could be, I suppose, what's perceived as quite introverted leaders. Yeah. But they still get some amazing work done because yeah. they connect, they listen, they care. Yeah. They, you know, give that real clarity. So, yeah. you know, I think that's probably why people step away from it. Well, then, if you do accept a leadership position, what's the sacrifice that you're agreeing to? What? I don't believe that you genuinely have to make a sacrifice. Doesn't mean that you have to don't put, you know, if you firmly believe and you want to do something, so a really good and true leader yeah. actually just knows where to put their energy, where the priorities are. Yeah. They put as much, I suppose, sacrifice or, you know, thought or uh, time into something that they would do, whether that's a hobby or the children, whatever. What they do know is to set boundaries, recognize priorities, yeah. and yeah. actually do that for themselves and the others. So it doesn't have to be long hours. Mm. It just looks like your day looks very different. Well, is it a good idea or a bad idea? If you see, let's say, bad leadership, very generic description, yeah. <laughs> and you get offered a role to move into that leadership, is it a matter of be the change you wish to see in the world? Like, are you going in to try and change things? Um, oh, I suppose that, that's, a, that's a big question because yeah. it depends what role you're stepping into. I suppose if I just pull it back and go, if you have been offered an opportunity for leadership and say this is your first leadership role, mm-hmm. then be the change you want to be. I actually think as in be the change for yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really, really key. You know, actually have a really good conversation about the role up front. This is where I think some people probably fall over yeah. is because it's like, Oh, I have to say yes, and they yes. just accept it without yes. knowing what's on the table. I've done that before. I've said yes, and then I have to keep yeah. saying yes because I didn't know what it all meant until yeah. burnout. Yeah. <laughs> See, my problem is just saying no because, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's the that's a problem though because it's just like oh no, too much. Look, like with the whole stereotypes around the roles or whatever, it would just freak me out. Like, oh no, I'm not this or I'm not yeah. that. But then, so that's the type of thing that would scare me yeah, from. Yeah. So I think if you're offered a role, I suppose my, my suggestion on that would be, you know, have a really good conversation as to what, you know, your hiring manager or your, your leader, what their expectations, yeah. you know, understand yeah. and share and discuss, you know, what you think yeah. could be the opportunities and the things you could have value. Yeah. And also, you know, be upfront and honest. You know, I've got a really a good friend who had always said she didn't, think that she was capable to take on more senior or leadership roles mm-hmm. what I think she did realize I think she's highly capable and she's proven it yeah. but what she did really well is exactly what I've said she will be really off, open and honest I don't know this I'll need some support on that she saw herself a mentor yeah yeah you know, and she's brilliant yeah. yeah yeah so I think if you're offered a role rather than going I'll just take it it's going to actually go into it with your eyes open and yeah, have a plan yeah. of action to yeah. set yourself up for success yeah, and then that goes both ways as well if you're the leader trying to bring somebody up it is a matter of understanding that they're not going to know everything and giving them the support that they need yeah why yeah. throw someone into the no. zone of panic the it's point? not doing them or you or the business yeah. any favors yeah. yeah yeah okay so on creating better leaders being better leaders what is your like gold nugget of wisdom my gold nugget of wisdom would be I recommend getting in t- touch with me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, what I actually really recommend, and I suppose, yes, I sound a bit like a stuck record, but actually start with yourself. Now, mm-hmm. what I mean by that is 
If you did nothing else, book a one-on-one, -on -one, a regular one-on-one -on -one with yourself. Some of the best leaders that I know actually have them as meetings in their diary. I love that. With themselves. What, is, so what does that look like? Just like you would do for anybody else. If you had a project meeting, yeah. you know, a meeting with Tori, whatever, you would have it in your calendar and you hold it, yeah. you know, sacred. Well, all I'm imagining so you right now one is that <laughs> I'm pretending yeah. to be two people. Yeah. I'm like, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> what do, like, what do you mean? Is it, uh, yeah, is it sort of sit down and reflect on how you're going or yeah. whatever it is? The yeah, however you prefer to do it. I call it balcony time. So what I mean by that is you've got a balcony dance floor. So just go with me on this. Mm -hmm. If you are on the dance floor, what are mm -hmm. you doing? You're dancing. dancing. You're dancing, yeah. yeah. You're doing the doing, you know, you're shaking your moves, your head's down, you're in the floor, you know, you're getting on with it, right? Yeah. And that's what we do all the time. And if you buck a one-on-one -on -one with yourself and you hold it sacred, it's as important as any other meeting, it's a chance to go up on the balcony. So when you're up on the balcony, yeah. what, what happens? What's different? You're yeah. watching the people on the dance floor. You have yeah. a smoke. You get a different... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> the, really it's, yeah, hopefully it's rainbows and unicorns <laughs> and not smoke. But, however, <laughs> what you do is you get a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. So how you want to do it is up to you. I mean, I think journaling is an amazing thing. And it's not for everybody. It's not yeah. a dear diary scenario. Journaling with purpose is, you know, about, you know, what's going on? Actually, what are my goals? How do I want to show up as a leader? What's my brand yeah. you know, that I'm going to do? So if you've got a goal of that then you'd sit down in your meeting and go, you know, how am I tracking? What's gone well? What's not? What have I learned? What could I do differently? Yeah. And actually, you also get, I suppose, the tactical side to go strategically. Yeah. What's next? What do we need to change? Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be hours and hours, but if you do a regular meeting with yourself, that's okay. about what's time. regular. Yeah. Well, look, regular is, you know, it could be, I do them once a week. Okay. So that's regular for me. Half an hour once a week, maybe a, a little bit longer, um, you know, if I've got the time. At least once a month, I would say, the yeah. bare minimum. Most yeah. people will sit down at the end of the year when it's performance review. <laughs> <laughs> that's yep. not regular. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you really care and want to be a really good leader, mm -hmm. actually invest in yourself because then that's knowledge and actually recharge time that you've had with new perspective that you can give back to yourself and the business to make people and yourself successful yeah I love that love it mm. Mm. all right well thank you so much for your time Debbie if our listeners want to get a hold of you or look at what it is that you do where can they go um, I'd, I'd say connect with me on LinkedIn Debbie mm -hmm. Gregory or you can email me at Debbie um, Debbie at positive direction .co .nz. beautiful thank, thank you so much for your time thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Boxes and Briefs is proudly brought to you by Gilligan Shepherd the problem solvers in business Thank you.